Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the web interface in Reaper. Now, the concept of this feature is it allows us to control Reaper from a handheld device, like a phone or a tablet, or even a laptop or another computer. Anything that can run a browser can control Reaper remotely. Now, the only limitation with getting this to work is that all your devices, your phone, your tablet, and your Reaper computer are all on the same network. So let's go through setting it up. I have a project in front of us, and I want to control this with my phone. So I'm going to go to Preferences. I'm going to scroll down to the tab over here, Control OSC Web. We go to Add, and we're going to choose the Control Surface Mode, and we'll choose Web Browser Interface. It's going to default to port 8080, and in most situations, we could just leave that. Then we can go down over here to create a username and password. You don't really have to use this, but we're going to do it just so I can show you. I'll put in Kenny colon 1234. Then we can choose the default interface. We'll get back to this later, but for now, we'll keep it set to index. And then you can go down over here to the access URL. Now you could just copy this and send it to your phone or tablet, but a better way of doing it is choosing this here. Use rc.reaper.fm, which is going to send an ID right here to the Reaper server. So if your IP address changes over time, any bookmark we create will still be valid. It'll adjust to your changing IP. So I suggest using this. Create any ID you want, it doesn't have to be that unique. Any simple word or phrase will work. I'm going to choose hello. Then we go down here and apply settings. And that's going to send it to the Reaper server to allow us to use that ID. Now we can go to our phone or a tablet and type in this address. I'm going to choose Chrome, but any browser will work. Go to the address bar and type in RC for remote control dot Reaper dot fm. Hit return, and it takes us to this website. We can read the instructions, but we've already done part of it. All we have to do now is type in that ID. Type in hello, hit OK, and now we created a web address that we can use to control Reaper. We could bookmark it, or we could just click it right here. Now, because we created a name and password, we have to enter it here. Log in. And just like that, we have an interface to control Reaper. Let's close this. Go back to our phone and let's hit play. And just like that, we're controlling Reaper from our phone. We could do play. We could do pause. We could do stop, turn on looping, or turn it off. And we could even record. Now, to get around our project, I really recommend using markers. If you look up here, we have a marker for verse one, chorus one, verse two, and so on, which will make it easier to navigate our session from the buttons down here. Just hit them to jump around to different sections. Course two, verse two, course one, and verse one. So it's a lot easier to navigate with your phone or tablet if you set up markers in advance. So now let's scroll down on the phone. And we can see all the tracks. Our drums, our bass tracks, the guitars, vocals, and our effects. So if you want to adjust things on these tracks, just select them and you get a fader, a mute, a solo. You can change the monitoring mode, auto mode or tape mode, monitoring off or monitoring on. We could adjust the fader right from here 
and the fader moves on the screen in our phone and in the project. So we can create new mixes right from the phone. Go to a track and readjust it here. But the main use of this is to do some recording. So you can go into the live room or your vocal booth and control Reaper remotely. Go into record. Let's record some vocals. But let's start at verse two. Move over to verse two. Vocal is in record. I mean, go right here, hit the record button to start recording vocals. Time won't wait, so you better run. This time it could be for real. And we can create takes by recording on top of each other. Time won't wait, so you better run. This time it could be for real. Well and we can go back later and comp them in the computer. And we could also abort takes if they're not usable while we're recording them. Let's clear this. Hit record on the phone. Time won't wait, so you better run. This time it could be brutal. If you don't like it, hit abort. What is right for the mind? Get out of my face, step out of my sight. And it stops recording and erases that take. It's very useful. Now let's say you don't delete vocal and you want to double the vocal, or add a harmony, just take this track out of record, click it to go into the track, and choose this option right here, clone without media. Hit that. It duplicates our track right down here, and we can record on that one now. Go into record, and you're ready to record on that track instead. Very handy feature, as it duplicates the track with all the settings, and the effects. Now let's go back to the preferences. There's a few other options right over here. Besides index, which is the default, we could also change this to be basic. And if we choose this, we get a different interface by default. So let's go back to our phone, reload this page, and now it looks like this. It's gonna work the same, Record, stop, abort record. We can go to our tracks, adjust the fader. It just looks more basic. So if you prefer this, just choose this as your default. We could also choose click right here. This is gonna create a visual click for one of your devices that you can watch while you perform. Let's turn on the metronome. If we go back to the phone and refresh it, it just looks black. But if we go into play, we have a visual click track. So you can set this up on your phone or the drummer's phone so you can see a visual click playing around with the song. So you can use that instead of having a click playing in your headphones. And you can set this up to different phones so your drummer can have a visual click and you can have the transport and mixer controls. Let me show you how you do that. Go back to the preferences. We can use the default index. Now if we reload it on the phone, it goes back to this. But when your drummer sets it up, they can just type in this at the end. So they'll type in rc.reaper.fm slash hello, which is our ID, slash click.html. Hit return. And now your drummer has a visual click, even though the default is set to index which is the main transport and mixer. So the drum is gonna see this. And someone else can see this. And 
Now you could also choose to see lyrics. If we choose the option over here, lyrics.html, if you have a MIDI file that has lyrics in it, you can see lyrics go across your screen on your phone or tablet. So if you're doing karaoke or you're creating custom MIDI files so your singer can see the lyrics, they can go to this at the end of the web address. And you could also customize the interface. If you want to see the pages that Reaper is using, just click right here. And these are the choices that come with Reaper. But if you want to make your own, just go right here into the user pages. And if you want to start off with one of the Reaper ones, just open this up, copy it over, and then just edit this one. Let's name it custom. And you can edit this in a text editor. And if you close this and open it up again, we can see the custom one right here. So that's pretty much it. That's the web interface in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!